Hi, everybody. Hoping you can hear me over in. Yep, I think you can. So I'm going to yep, uh, be going live. So I'm going to uh, be going live. Hi, everybody. Okay, everybody, it's 9 a.m. Give me one minute and I'm going to be going live uh, and talking to all of you. Uh, let me just make sure that this is all working. It's my first slide. Uh, okay, I hear that you can't hear me. Let me see what's going on with that. Okay, can you hear me now? My volume's all the way up. I've closed the CryptoVoxels window. Let me see if I can get that back up. See if you can hear me where there's a setting for that. Okay, can you guys hear me? Not sure. Okay, did that work? Okay, did that work? Okay, let me close this window. I hear that it worked because I'm getting a reverb. Okay, everybody, just a little glitch here at the beginning. But I'm really excited to be here. I'm getting some notes and some show and tell I'm going to give you. And I'm really uh, very excited to talk about a couple of things this morning. First, um, I'm going to be telling you about the Art Justice Cohort's creative process in making our first NFT exhibition as part of the Shilla Bees at the Hive in CryptoVoxels that the wonderful Hanifa uh, has Put, brought us all together. She's brought together 10 artists who are going to be showing their work uh, in the Shilla B Hive in CryptoVoxels. So anyway, um, the Art Justice, my group's a little bit different. The Art Justice cohort uh, is a group of 13 artists, 12 of whom will be uh, showing their work in, the, in this exhibition. And we were born in the summer of 2020 amid that perfect storm of injustice where we had three deadly plagues, uh, systemic racism, the worst global pandemic in a century, and the historic economic depression, partly because of the pandemic. And all three of these fell disproportionately on people of color and those forced to live in the margins. And so with the George Floyd murder, I was so appalled at how blatant that was and just how horrible things were that I brought together these 13 artists who all believe that uh, we have the power of art, to, that art has the power to change people. And that how, that's how we'll get political and cultural change. So I love that we're able to bring uh, art to a new platform, that we get to have a new audience. But what I'm going to talk about today a lot is the creative process that we go through and the story that we want to tell. And irregardless of what the platform is, for me, and uh, it is the same creative process of how I decide what work will come together, what work of my own that I will show, and how I will tell the story that I want to tell. So, it, and it's always about who is the audience that this art I am creating, it's creating for me to say something, but I have to do it in a way that an audience can understand. So right now in the CryptoVoxel space, it's sort of these blank 3D walls, which is pretty exciting and a little daunting. And you come back in two weeks and you're going to get to see all the stuff that's on the wall. So the Art Justice cohort just got done. Um, I, I don't know how well you can see this and it looks like it's mirroring. But this was our flyer for the our handout for the show we just had at the Soho Photo Gallery. And that show was Protest Resilience Identity. And what we did after that show, which was really powerful, it was for the month of August, is we decided that we also want to keep telling the story of resistance. But how we tell that story is going from protest, and we're now using joy as our form of resistance. 
So the show that you're going to be seeing up in CryptoVoxels is going to be dealing with joy, how uh, how joy is a, as an act of resistance. And how do we show that? These are the things that I struggle with. So in my creative process, I spend a lot of time kind of thinking and not even being aware that I'm thinking all the time, but I get anxious. I have a story I want to tell. I start playing in my mind about what visuals will I be using? How will I tell that? Whose work can I put together when I'm curating also a group of artists? Whose work talks to each other? Where do I place it on the wall? How do I sequence it? How do I make one piece of art talk to another piece of art and then talk to the audience? So I spend a lot of time... Um, thinking about that. And um, I also really believe uh, that talking with other people as I'm thinking and other artists and figuring out, uh, exploring ways of, of dealing with these issues that I want to deal with uh, is so helpful. So um, I'm going to digress for one minute and just talk a little bit about some work that I'm working on on my own. Um, so a lot of my work, I, uh, I deal with uh, immigration. And I had a whole series called Immigrants, Us Against the Wall. And I, uh, I photographed immigrants with their backs uh, to with their backs to the uh, to the camera because they needed to maintain anonymity, it, it, particularly in the Trump years. And I had them pick a wall and they would face the wall. And if they had a child that, who was an American citizen, that person would be uh, would be facing uh, out because they didn't need to be hidden so much. Uh, and uh, I just got a text asking me to do something. I'm not sure about what. Uh, I'm being told that, uh, I'm gonna stop for a minute because I'm being told that somebody joining in can only hear the bees buzzing. So uh, I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, let me see what this other text is. Isn't technology fun? Uh, okay, I'm going back to my CryptoVoxel page. Uh, and let me see if I can fix that. Not sure, but we're going to give it our best shot. Nope, this is... Uh, did you click on the... Um, you have to click on the screen, I think. Um, I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm going to click on my screen again here. And uh, can you hear me now? I'm not sure how to increase this volume. I'm going to try to... Okay, so um, I'm going to close out this window again. Is that correct? Okay, uh, there we go. Let me go back here. Okay, so... Um, I think I'm still have a crypt. Okay. I needed to close out the other screen. So I was starting to talk about the creative process that I use when I'm trying to start new, which is what I've been doing. And some of that work will be shown in this show. So I was talking about immigration and up against walls. And I was thinking about how do I take those more literal graphic walls that I used in my other work, and how do I turn those walls into something more metaphoric, something that would tell the story of systemic racism, and also all the systemic uh, injustices that we experience, all the walls that are placed in the boundaries and the borders that are placed in front of us. So what I've come up with is I'm photographing people uh, behind uh, cellophane and behind paper, highlighting how we... Um, how we don't view people, we view uh, their race, their gender, their age, prior to viewing them as a human. So I am just gonna show a couple of these to see if you can see this. I like holding my phone up. 
So if you can see that, it's a little uh, glitchy and it's a little hard to see, which is actually kind of the point. Uh, just do that now. And um, this is what you'll see. It's, I can tell it, you know, the light isn't very good. But this is what I am working on now, this process uh, of these images. And you'll be able to see them up in uh, some of them up in this exhibit that we're doing as NFTs they'll be. One of the great things about photography is you can actually turn your photos into NFTs and that you get this whole new audience and this whole new way of a whole new platform and a whole new way of, uh, of, uh, of, of creating. And that's really uh, pretty terrific. So I wanna go back a little bit to this whole notion of joy as an act of resistance and talk about how it's really taking the anger that I think many of us feel and how we bring that into a place of joy. Because what is more, uh, more uh, 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 fulfilling than being able to show that you are still joyful? You know, the act of protest, when I go and protest, I actually feel a lot of joy because I feel powerful and I feel I'm with people who are like-minded and I get this whole visual uh, sense comes over me and a whole sense of joy. So how I translate that into, uh, I use my camera a lot as my tool to create my art. And then how do I use that and how do I do that to, uh, to continue bringing that feeling to, to the art and to my world and getting that out and making me feel fulfilled. So um, what I did was uh, just to tell you a little bit more concrete, I met with a right-hand person and I wanna give a shout out to the members of the uh, Art Justice cohort. So, because they're really a fabulous group of artists. We have Gus Bennett, who is a, uh, guy in his 50s lives in New Orleans and is all about photographing his community. And uh, during both Katrina, he helped uh, help build back and during uh, the storms recently, uh, he was able to really uh, take care of his community is where he focuses on and where he focuses his work. Um, and it's just stunning. Isaac Scott is a uh, potter who wasn't able to get into a studio during the pandemic uh, lockdown. So he picked up his camera and went and photographed down at the Philadelphia Museum. He's in grad school there. And the images he took of the George Floyd protests from down there won him the National Magazine Award for Featured Photography, something that people work on photographers for their entire lives. It's really stunning work. Uh, Dan Alvarado does these fa does photo photography and then does these fabulous micron pencil and pen and, and painting silkscreen uh, uh, images and, and works of art from his uh, from his photos. Um, Amber J. Phillips is a storyteller and an activist, and she just has her first video was in the Black uh, Black Star International Festival in Philly, and it won the uh, the narrative of the audience narrative award for storytelling it was fabulous. Sharila Mae Bonfeld is a tapestry artist and uh, it's just, you'll be amazed at the works of art that she creates with a needle and thread. And one of the most striking that we had at the Soho Photo Gallery was an image of 1600 names of the people police have killed uh, uh, in the year 2016. Diana Bajerno, if we have time today, I'm going to play a little video. She talks about her creative process in coming up with her. She does these white wedding dresses of domestic violence. There was a woman murdered by her uh, partner on the day of her wedding. And every year, women go out and protest wearing wedding dresses. Uh, Francisco Yusito is a Spanish-American uh, brilliant uh, artist and uh, does a lot of variety of work for, and in a variety of mediums and also is an educator. Um, Anonymous is a woman who is, uh, particularly in the Trump years, was worried to show her name. So you'll see her beautiful emotional work about what it is to be a migrant. Annalise Barlow, another great photographer who photographs her community. Uh, in color and in black and white. 
Uh, Chris Fassi and Vanessa Charlotte are two new members, and they both uh, photograph their Black communities in very emotional, moving ways as photojournalists and as fine art photographers. So all of us believe that the art we create will create change. And now we're so super excited to be going through this process of how we're going to put our 3D, you know, our NFTs to this 3D space. So the creative process for me was I met with um, this woman who I just love working with. She's a brilliant artist, brilliant photographer, uh, was a commercial photographer, also a fine art photographer and a great graphic designer. And we looked at the space that we have at the CryptoVoxel space and what our studio is like. And we started trying to figure out, we're so used to working in exact size measurements. And when you get into 3D, you don't work in it quite that way. But what we're going to do is create schematics in Photoshop where we have a little bit more control and then bring those into the 3D world so we can be certain that we have photos that are uh, talking to each other and work well being next to each other. It's a little challenging because we have uh, 13 or 12 different artists and sometimes you'll want to show more than one or two pieces to have things really talk to each other, really tell your story. So we'll have to see how that all works out. Um, but it's really fun to move everything around. It's fun to think about turning them into NFTs where you might do something that's a little bit more graphic, a little bit more striking uh, so that it really hits you uh, and you get the great digital light that, uh, that brings so much more sometimes to some of these images. So, um, we're working on that right now. The other great thing about having the 3D space more than a 2D physical space is we can hang things from the ceiling and we can put things on the floor that you can fly and navigate through, but they can actually help bring you and tell you the story, whereas you're much more confined when you're in physical walls. So I find that to be really uh, creatively invigorating and, um, and exciting. So, um, that's, you know, it's funny. I find in my creative process, whenever I start working in something that's new to me, this whole notion of joy has been around, but it's really something that I haven't thought about before. Every place I turn around, I start seeing other people talking about joy as well and uh, as a form of resistance and wanting to see more joy. And so it's always just if I keep my ears open and my eyes open, it's really fabulous what I get to see and that the community that I get to become part of because um, I so believe as difficult as it sometimes can be to work with other people, the sense of community and the sense of support and the sense of uh, what one can accomplish accomplish is really uh, is really fabulous and the stories that we want to tell then um, become so much deeper and so much richer. So um, I think I have a couple more minutes um, and I think I've yacked enough. So I want to, I, I don't know if this will work, but Diana Bajerner, who I mentioned before, is a Colombian American photographer and artist and she lives in New York and the name of her project is My White Dress. And we will have one of the wedding dresses. They're stunning. She photographs them in black and white and actually shows them as about six feet high in light boxes. And so that's, in a sense, similar to what, uh, you know, what, what the CryptoVoxel space, because it's a digital space. So I'm going to hold this uh, video up and see if, um, give me one minute to try to see if this will work. I'm having, we're having, it's always, you know, when I, I uh, tested this before and it worked, but now it's not working. There we uh, go. In the projects that I work with and how. Okay. Might... Okay. So I, I met a lot of them and they told me there's. Okay. Oh, hope... and I did. Here we go. Hello. Uh, so I'm going to share a little bit about my creative process uh, in the projects that I work with and how they apply to my practice. Um, in this case, I'm going to try to focus on the project, My White Dress, that we exhibit at the cohort too, at the Cell Photo Gallery. Um, every project is very different, but for me, uh, the first thing that happens is that I get in touch with the story and the people, the community that's involved and the people. And I try to do a lot of research. Uh, in the case of my white dress, I 
I heard the story and I read about it. I try to look into articles. I try to look into things that have been done about this march in New York City. And I couldn't really find anything besides a few articles. Uh, and I kept, this project kept in my mind. It's a project that touched me when I heard about it. I thought it was very emotional, very powerful. So I started contact in the production, I think, along the research. I started to contact the women that are involved. They're, they plan the march every year. And I told them that I wanted to be there and participate and get to know them. And, and that's what I did. Um, I work along many women and I heard their stories. And I decided that I wanted to just do a um, re reach out and then be with them and get to know them. And I didn't have a preconceived idea in this case of how I wanted to go about this project and how it was going to be transformed. But I just wanted to, uh, I had the click. I'm like, this is something that I want to work on. And I want to get to know these women that have changed the stories of pain into activism, right? And which is such power. So uh, when I met them, I started to meet a lot of them. They told me. I think I'm going to end there because it's hard for me to know how, how you can really receive it. But she goes on to talk about how she met them, interviewed, and spent a lot of time with them. And I think that, uh, that that's something that's so critical to me in my work. When I'm telling the stories of people, I actually spend a lot of time with them to get that one uh, image or two images or to get the project to really speak to me and then hopefully speak to other people. So... Um, I'm super excited to have been able to share our creative process with you. Um, it's um, it's really inspiring to me to be in a new space and to uh, come up with new ways to be able to uh, fly around and see work in ways that I would never have imagined being able to present it before. So I hope you guys all come back uh, in two weeks and see if we've... Um, been able to how we've been able to get our work on the walls and if um and have some you know be inspired and, and get a sense of a joy as a real powerful act of uh of resistance and of changing the world for a better place because i think we all believe that uh that that's what we need to do and um become part of this community of, of, of new NFT artists uh, showing their work in, in new places or traditional artists showing their work in, in new ways so um I, I'm really grateful to New World Curator, to, uh, to, to Nifty Kits and uh, to, to Hanifa for giving us this opportunity and to all the other 10 artists who I'm going to be with. Um, I'm just completely honored to share all this. So thanks, everybody, for watching.